day 13 of my challenge i'm trying to reach the rating of 2000 before the end of the year and today two very intense games one a simple plan to play against the queen's gambit 1d4 two how to use sacrifices to crush your opponents let's go first game we are with the black pieces and we are playing against the rating now this opening is not putting a pawn immediately in the center which is what i consider uh, one of the best opening but is controlling those two important central squares that's why we cannot push the e pawn and i like to respond with the other knight so to copy and see okay which of these pawns are they going to push because now the e pawn cannot be pushed and so they have to choose between the c and the d now that everything is clear uh what are we going to do usually what you have to try to do in these openings is to try to put a pawn in the center now if we play the move d5 you're going to take we take back with the knight then they play e4 they attack our knight and then they play d4 and they end up with two pawns in the center of the board that's why i like to play first the move e6 followed by d5 controlling directly the center i think this is very simple then how are we going to develop the king side well we move this bishop here or there and then we castle let's go with d5 immediately there we go now the question will be how to develop the other side of the board usually the goal in the opening is always to get all your pieces out of the box you are like a kid and kids are not playing just with one toy at the time it just takes the entire box they throw it on the floor and they make a huge mess so be like a kid also kids are very strong at chess so that's a proof of concept <laughs> let's go with the bishop out and then we are ready to castle perfect there we go it looks like a queen's gambit something like this but we have to notice one very nice thing usually in the queen's gambit this bishop wants to be here out instead here the bishop is inside the box and there is no way to bring this bishop out is blocked and it's going to stay there for a long time now i will show you an amazing plan to develop all your pieces on the king side oh, sorry on the queen side we are taking here but just now that this bishop has been moving one once already because now the bishop has been moving twice so you want this bishop to lose a tempo now we play a6 followed by b5 we'll we will be attacking this uh bishop and then we are going okay we play b5 no matter what and then we are going to develop this bishop in fianchetto perfect and there is just one piece remaining now this is developed and this this knight we don't want to go with the knight on c6 because we still have a problem as you can see the problem is that why does two pawns in the center of the board we just have one so we need to fight for the center how how do we do that c5 is the key we are trying to trade a side pawn well side slash central pawn the c pawn for the d pawn so that we will both have one pawn in the center of the board usually this leads to a quite symmetrical position once those two pawns are traded uh, but i think we have done really well with the development so good job here great now we are going to take back with the bishop and then to develop the knight yeah i wanted to say that that there is one move that we need to look for and there's exactly this one because we are we are removing now we are forced to remove the knight that is protecting our our king and i'm a little bit concerned here honestly because if we move this knight isn't there some sort of sacrifice here so let's say that we play knight there bishop takes king takes knight there king goes there and then the queen slides here this is called the greek gift you're sacrificing a bishop to then give a check with the knight and to then bring the queen to try to give mate now the common way to try to survive is after knight there bishop takes to take the knight goes here and then the king goes there also one idea could be to first take there and then to move this knight away i mean knight g4 i'm looking at this move with the idea of taking there hmm. bang but there is this anyway maybe we can go here we can take knight there but then the queen can take our knight uh, so what about the knight g4 bishop takes in king h8 because we are offering the trade of queens and if the queen takes we can take here first with check the king moves and then we take here and this bishop is also hanging this is interesting i think we will go for this because trading the queens is quite important um i know that this knight is not going backwards and this is something yeah 
there's something that you should be thinking that you want to have a way to go back for the night. Now, do we actually have it? Mm. Ouch. What if the move H3? Well, we could always take there. We could always just take the pawn. Okay, I think we just develop a knight. We are attacking this pawn. The idea is that if the bishop takes, we have two options. We can either take, and after knight there, we go back with the king, and after queen takes, we try to defend, or <laughs> we have a knight hanging now. Okay, but after this, we could simply play the move h5 to support this knight, and we protect the pawn at the same time. You could also take here. This is a possibility, and I think we will go for that. It's true that this bishop can be taken with check, but we can go there. Queen takes, and we can move this knight away, and then we take back. And if this is taken, the bishop is hanging. Okay, we try this. We take here. Okay, but what if bishop... Wait, wait. If bishop takes here, and then the queen goes there. Uh-huh. That's a problem. Let's play h5. We are protecting the knight. It's scary, huh? Oh, what is this? Ah, this is not a good move. Why? I'm just taking here. Taking a pawn, attacking this. Okay, knight h3 was really easy. My opponent played an amazing game. And I think we did, we did something wrong in the opening. Maybe we went for c5 a bit too early. Or we should have waited to capture the pawn. Uh, because usually you don't want to allow white to play the move e4. But we will go back to the opening and fix that. We got to a bad position. Um, and now we are probably back on track. But just two minutes on the clock. This game is super, super, duper, hyper, booper intense. <laughs> okay, now we trade the queens. There we go. We have an extra pawn. And our position was a bit shaky shaky so trading the queens is great now we go towards an end game it is really looking promising for us we have a strong knight looking here strong bishop looking there this knight is very passive just needs to protect his pawn the rook is now going back to cover the only thing we have to be careful is the time let's go with the knight here trading the bishop here in such a position is a great idea and this knight is now attacking a third time there also this bishop cannot be moved because the pawn would be hanging I'm ready to bring the other rook to the party as well. So maybe we could threaten some sacrifices. This is starting to look nice. Alright, we take with the rook. Now this rook is also very active. Uh, this is hanging though. Okay, our opponent made their job easier. Simpler. That was a free cheese macaroni. Now the knight is attacking the rook. Also this pawn. Always remember to ask, what is our opponent threatening? I think we cannot protect this pawn with the rook by moving the rook, because rook here would still be hanging. So we will move the rook all the way back. We will leave this pawn at his own destiny. But we can actually take another pawn, which is this one. And the nice part is that after the rook takes, that's mate. <laughs> nice. We have to analyze this game. Actually... The biggest trouble was in this position, where the position is plus 0 0.90. So we were never lost, not even close. And here, this sacrifice is exactly what white needs to play. I was calculating this line, and here we're thinking, okay, I have two options, probably taking in King of Shade. I'm so happy, because actually both options are good for black. Well, white is still better, but they are very playable. Even this move, because I want to now trade the queens. Uh, and then this bishop will be in trouble. In fact, the best move here for white is just to go back with the bishop. And basically white won a pawn, but this pawn is now hanging. So the position is roughly equal, but... Oh wait, now this move is a mistake. <laughs> I swear, that move is considered the best move according to the engine. And then once it's played, it's considered a mistake. This is, this is why you don't have to trust the chess.com engine. Anyway... I, I think this is the critical line, because black is winning a piece, and after the check, the king has to go back. And now the queen takes, and this is the tricky line. I was considering pawn takes and this, and I, I don't see a clear, clear way to defend the mate. And actually, I see there is just one single move. If not, the position would be lost. I couldn't find the defense, but it's hidden. Basically, I know that the defense usually would be bishop here, bishop there, to protect. But there is not a bishop that could go there to protect, but there is the queen, queen d3. It's the only move that is defending here for black, controlling the square, then the queen can go here, trying to trade pieces. It's not even needed, but uh, here black can defend. 
Going back to the opening, I would like to avoid why to play the move e45. This is all good, taking here and playing a6 is also, is actually a book move, meaning that it's exactly theory. Okay, the bishop goes back and b5 is not considered the best move, but it's also playable. Maybe here you can go immediately for the move c5 and then say, okay, I will move later this so that you, we can play like c5 and then knight here or immediately controlling the central squares with the knight. And uh, I think maybe this could have been a better approach. Let's say white plays here this move. And already here there is not a problem because we can just take here and after this we can play e5 ourselves. The knight has to move back and then we develop and we actually have an amazing position. We can go with the bishop here and we don't have to play b5 for example in this situation. That's why here instead of b5 I think c5 is the best move attacking directly the center and then decide how to develop this bishop which anyway usually is protected for example here if white plays castle i think the theoretical move is to play this bishop there and now you can play either bishop there or, so it's basically the same right it's basically very similar to what to what we played okay let's say bishop here this and now c5 this aha uh -huh. here is the tricky part so here we are not taking immediately because actually this e5 move is strong instead Black is playing knight bd7. We are going to take there next and we are controlling this square with the knight. But now this move can still be played. Haha, -ha, that's so beautiful. Okay, basically here we can take first there. The queen takes and now the rook is protected so we can take there. Instead, if we take with the bishop e5 if we take there the rook is now unprotected and also we are not attacking this pawn last thing i want to see what if b4 here protecting the pawn you can play the move a5 attacking here this pawn is actually hanging but if white is taking you can first take this one and then this one will fall just to mention a3 doesn't work because you can take and now the pawn cannot take back because this rook could be lost these were the most important plans that you have to know to play against the queen's gambit with the black pieces so those were very important plans a new game let's go e4 g6 this is the modern defense every time your opponent gives you the chance you go with the two pawns in the center of the board now we will develop a knight and then probably the other knight okay this is tricky this becomes a sort of um sicilian i'm going to take this pawn and now queen a5 is the trickiest of the trickiest it's very is a very strong move because now i want a pawn but now black is attacking this pawn and this knight i think i will just let this knight go and play the move knight here i'm sacrificing this uh pawn okay they are not even taking it i will play now so if i play bishop there they are going to take I always have to consider that the black bishop can take there and then the queen is taking. So I don't play this because if not they play this. And after I take, they take with the queen and then I have to go back with the bishop. And that's why I play just bishop out and I'm ready to castle. Now they have to choose. Will they take there? Okay, they took there and basically they have now an extra pawn, right? But I have the bishop here. Look at those. And look at my opponent pieces, they are all still in the starting square. The only piece that was moved, that was developed, was this queen. Which is not great, honestly. I think white here has a great chance to get an amazing position. For example, we could play e5 or we could play bishop there, stopping the king from castling. Okay, I will go with e5 because I'm getting space. And the question is, where is this knight going? If this knight is moving here, I can take even more space by playing the move c4. And the knight needs to move again. And then maybe I can play a4. <laughs> attack, re attack for real this knight. Okay, let's go. Now a4 is leaving a pawn hanging. But if this knight is capturing, I play rook c1. I'm pinning this knight. This knight cannot be moved without leaving this queen unprotected. And both moves d5, uh, sorry, b5 and d5 to protect the knight is not possible. Because if d5 I take a passant, if b5 I just take the pawn. So let's go. And I'm threatening a5. And so probably I am provoking a weakness now. The move a5 to stop my pawn from advancing. Okay. So d6 is actually leaving a square for the knight here. If I play a5. Which I might play. Because this knight here looks so ugly. 
really so few space. And now I could take there, but I'm helping my opponent to get some space. If I leave this pawn here, they are going to trade pieces. I don't want to trade pieces. So there is one move that I have in mind, and it's to sacrifice another pawn, which is actually really nice, in my opinion. So we go for it. We are sacrificing a pawn, and now look at this pawn structure. The king is starting to be also weak. I think knight there could be a great idea now. We go with the knight to the center, and we are also attacking this pawn. I'm thinking how to bring the queen to the action. Because if I go with the knight there, there is knight here, which is attacking my bishop. I will actually go with the knight there. Because I'm also threatening to take here maybe one day. And after rook takes, I also take there. Now, I cannot do this tactic because after knight there, black is just going to take this bishop. So I move the bishop back. But the nice part is that this knight is untouchable. This h6 cannot be played. I'm going to take here, give a check. And then I'm able to jump with my knight even forward. My queen is joining the party, threatening mate. This is really a nice position. Another idea could be to play h4, h5 to attack this pawn and maybe try to bring also the, the other rook to the party. Okay, I think we go either with the queen here or with h4, h5. Or we could think about taking there. So we take rook takes, we take here the rook covers, so we go with the queen there and there is knight here protecting the rook. It's basically the only way. But then we can play f4. Oh wait, it's also attacking our bishop. So no. But what if we play bishop here, bishop here first, attacking the rook. Now, where is the rook going? If e5 is played, we have now this tactic working. This is a mistake because I have a four and I win a piece. There we go. Nice. It's fun to notice that those knight, for example, this knight is completely dominated by this bishop. The knight cannot go here, cannot go in any square forward because all these squares are controlled by the bishop. Now there is a pawn that has been captured. I think we don't really, we, we don't mind. I understand that this knight wants to go there to give a fork if we take. Maybe we even have a better move. Maybe we can play queen there and then take the knight. This looks fun. But honestly, simplicity is the key. I'm just taking the rook and yeah, you can go ahead and... And play this. I have an extra rook for now. It's true that my opponent has collected quite some pawns. Now I will play queen e2, protecting my queen. This bishop is protected and this rook is also protected. Now, I was thinking about just taking back. But maybe you have an even better move. The knight cannot go back. Doesn't have a way to come back. So I'm taking this pawn and I'm threatening to take here with check. I think this is even more precise. I want to give mate. That's what I want to do. I'm a simple lady. <laughs> a simple chess player. I just want to give mate. Okay, the knight has moved away. I think we take here with check without thinking too much. The king has to go. The king is nearly mated, huh? Not many squares. I didn't expect this move. So I'm thinking about giving this check. Then the queen covers. Okay, I will just take here. Getting rid of the knight so there are no surprises. Because one idea could be for black to play queen check. And then to move the knight back. So... We don't want to let that happen and we play, we take the knight. Now this is a free pawn and I'm going to take it because the king is mated, basically. That was a mistake. Yeah, now cannot I play this move? Mm, nice. The pawn was needed on b7 to protect the queen because now there is this tactic. And if the king takes the bishop, I'm taking here. If the king moves, I take the queen. Actually, I can take it even with the queen. G, G's. Just one consideration about this game, don't be scared of sacrificing material in exchange of activity. In this position, the only thing that white has is much more active pieces as the black pieces are all in the starting squares. I'm too pawned down, but I could put so much pressure that I won the game. And even the engine says plus 0.9, like if I would have an extra pawn which is sick. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If yes, remember to like and subscribe to the channel. See you tomorrow for day 14. And uh, thank you for watching. Ciao.